Well, hello, fellow insurance agents and financial analysts, financial planners, wealth managers, and so forth, finance majors. Welcome to Chapter 20 of Insurance, Risk of Insurance. And in this chapter, we're going to cover automobile insurance. Some of you may already be familiar with automobile insurance because you've had an experience with it which probably didn't make your parents very happy, but hopefully they got over it. So, with that said, let's jump right into automobile insurance. Okay, so personal auto insurance consists of the following six sections, okay? Part A, liability, and we're gonna drill deeper into each of these sections. We'll get some details on each section. Medical payments, uninsured motorist, property damage to your auto is part D. Now, honestly, I would say that um, the most frequently used portion of automobile insurance is going to be part D. Um, not sure why it was listed um, four parts down except to say that um, there is a very large uh, company called Verisk, V-E-R-I-S-K, that started out as the insurance services office. It was a nonprofit, and they provided uh, model legislation, or not really legislation, let me rephrase that. They've, they have provided, back in 2005, they wrote a model automobile uh, insurance policy that has been adopted by most insurance companies across the country. And uh, so, uh, for some reason, the ISO, which is now Bear Risk, listed property damage fourth, when it really ought to be listed first. All right, so then we have duties that the insured, the customer has after an accident or a loss and then general provisions. So let's jump right into um, some more details about automobile insurance. So as I said, back in 2005, the personal auto policy, the PAP, personal auto policy, was created and uh, it is widely used throughout the United States. So policies are pretty standard throughout the U.S. So the first question is, which vehicles are eligible to be insured. And note that I've highlighted the word personal, underlined it. As always, there is a big difference between a personal situation, a personal policy, and a commercial situation, a business situation, with a business policy. And what we're talking about is a situation that involves a, um, an individual uh, in their everyday activities using their everyday vehicles. All right, eligible vehicles. First, four wheels, four wheels owned by the insured or leased by the insured for at least six consecutive months. So your PAP is not going to apply to a rental car. There may be a provision that will apply, but generally speaking, you purchase a PAP for a car that you own or a car that you will lease for more than six months. All right. A pickup or van with a gross vehicle weight of 10,000 pounds or less. So just to give you some context, the average uh, car weighs about 4,000 pounds and the average SUV weighs about 5,000 pounds. So the purpose of this is to make sure that commercial vehicles are excluded. All right, there is a use exclusion. If a vehicle is being used regularly for business, the personal policy will not apply. The vehicle cannot be used to transport business materials on a regular basis unless the materials are incidental to a person's business. So let's give you an example of that. Let's say you have a plumber or some type of contractor and they keep their tools in the car, that's okay. But you, if you're a plumber 
and you're throwing parts that you're going to use in a job in your van, then your van will not be covered by your personal policy. You have to have a commercial policy. Okay? There you go. All right. And I've been in situations where um, I've, I've talked with people who have asked me questions about their personal policy and in talking with um, uh, insurance agents along with understanding this information that we're covering, then we've been able to advise them on the best way to be insured. Okay? So always separate uh, business and personal. All right, autos covered by the policy include any auto that is listed in the declarations page of the policy, and we've gone over that. A newly acquired auto. So there's some, um, there's some rules that you have to be familiar with. So if a new vehicle is a replacement, which means you sell one vehicle and you replace it with another vehicle, then that vehicle is automatically covered for liability, medical, and uninsured, Okay, and the buyer does not have to uh, alert the insurer for these uh, coverages to continue. Okay, but you do have to alert the insurer with, within 14 days for automatic collision, which is damage to the vehicle, coverage to continue. So, here's my recommendation. The moment you purchase a new vehicle, you take a picture of the vehicle identification number, you contact your um, automobile insurance agent, and you send him or her a picture of that vehicle identification number, usually found on the inside of the door. If you open the door, um, where the door makes contact and the latch is, that's usually where they'll put uh, a vehicle identification number. Sometimes they'll put it inside on the dashboard up on the, on the driver's side up by the windshield. They'll have a vehicle identification uh, sticker or tag on there. All right, but you've got 14 days. So liability, medical, and uninsured will continue automatically, but collision, you have 14 days, okay? If the new vehicle is an addition, so you have a car for, for husband and wife, one car for the husband, one car for the wife, and now Junior gets a car, that's an additional vehicle, then you have 14 days to alert the insurer for all coverage to continue. So, once again, even though you have 14 days, I would do it immediately. Okay? So what else is covered? A trailer owned by the named insured. A temporary substitute vehicle, which is a non-owned, which means it's rented, okay? And it's used temporarily because of mechanical breakdown, loss, or destruction of a covered vehicle. So if your car breaks down and you are using a vehicle while your car is being worked on, then it is covered under the PAP. Okay. All right. So, let's start with liability coverage. Section Part A. Consider the most important part because the claims can be really, really significant. Now, property damage collision claims can be high too. You know, they could be twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars, but a liability claim can be a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars or three hundred thousand dollars. All right, so damages can be for injury to the person driving, to a passenger, to someone else, or for property loss, okay? It protects a covered person against a suit or claim arising out of the ownership or operation of a covered vehicle. So you're driving your car and you violate a law, a traffic law, and you commit, you have an accident, and you damage their car, you damage their persons, you damage someone in your car, you damage a passenger in their car, 
um, you run into somebody's house, they file a claim against you for liability and you're covered. Okay? Coverage is usually written in split limits. So what does that mean? It means the amounts of insurance for bodily injury and property damage liability are stated separately. So we're going to take a look at that. So you have one limit for bodily injury and a separate limit for property damage. All right. So let's say you have split limits of 250, 500, and 100. So that's a pretty standard way of expressing split limits in an automobile policy. It means that you have bodily injury coverage of 250,000. So this is in thousands, 250,000. That's for bodily injury. So that's going to cover medical for any person that has been damaged, injured in an accident. Okay? A maximum of 500,000. So if there are three people and they're all injured and it costs $250,000 a piece to fix them, okay? then you're limited to 500,000 for that particular accident, okay? And a maximum of $100,000 in property damage for that accident, okay? All right, liability covers uh, or applies to the named insured, okay, whose ever name is on the policy and any family member who lives in the house. Okay? It also applies to any person using a covered vehicle with permission. So if you let someone else drive your car and they wreck your car, they have permission, you, they are covered, you are covered if an accident happens. Okay? Alright, a spouse who is not on the declarations page, say husband and wife, and the husband is on the declaration page, and the wife is not, and the spouse has moved out, is covered for 90 days. And after 90 days, that person who has moved out, they're separated, is no longer covered for that vehicle. So, one thing you might want to do is let that person, that let that spouse who's moving out, let them understand they can no longer drive your vehicle after 90 days and also let your insurance agent know what has happened. All right. A spouse who was listed uh, in the declaration page uh, who is not living in the house uh, is covered. Okay. Any person or organization legally responsible for any insured use of a covered uh, auto for that person or organization, okay, uh, is covered. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. I think we have an example here. Here we go, yeah. Mark injures a motorist while using his car to run an errand for his employer. So, Mark is driving his car. Mark is the named insured for his PAP, he has an accident and injures someone else in another car while he's running an errand for his employer. Okay, The employer is covered by Mark's personal auto policy. So, what happens is the motorist decides that he or she is going to sue Mark, but also sue Mark's employer since Mark was running, was working at the time of the accident and doing something that was related to work. Okay? So the employer, along with Mark, are both covered by Mark's policy. All right. Any person or organization legally responsible for the named insureds or family members' use of any auto or trailer other than a covered auto or one owned by the person or the organization. All right, so let's look. Here's an example. Mark injures a motorist, like before, only this time he's driving the car of a fellow employee to run an errand for the employer. How about that? 
once again, the employer is covered by Mark's personal auto policy. So Mark's policy is following Mark. Okay? Note, I was just going to say this, if Mark is driving a vehicle that is owned by the employer, that's a big distinguishing feature, the employer is not covered by Mark's policy. So Mark's policy will follow Mark, regardless of what he's driving, unless he is conducting business in an employer-owned car. Okay? And once again, in every one of these situations where there's an exclusion, the reason there is an exclusion is because the insurance company rightfully knows that another entity is responsible to pay. So Mark's insurance company knows they shouldn't have to pay if Mark is driving a vehicle that has been provided to him by the company. The company pays. All right. What does the insurer agree to do other than uh, property damage and bodily injury? They agree to provide defense and pay all legal costs for claims covered by the policy. So if a claim has been made against a policy owner, the policy will pay the claim but will also pay for the legal cost. Okay. Certain supplementary payments that um, the policy uh, might pay, the cost of the bail bond. So Mark uh, gets arrested and um, the, um, the, the policy will pay for his bail bond to get him out of jail. All right. If a judgment is rendered against Mark and it takes the insurance company a month to pay it and interest accrues on the judgment, the insurance company will pay the interest. Okay. Um, loss of earnings um, while uh, the insured was tied up in this situation, uh, fighting this situation, up to $200 a day will be paid. Okay. And other reasonable expenses, meaning that um, the insured and the insurance company will sit down and say, okay, what did this cost you? We'll reimburse you. Okay. All right, exclusions, okay? Insurance is always excluded when any activity or action is intentional. So you cannot run your car into somebody you don't like and expect to be covered by any form of insurance, okay? Any property that is in the vehicle, okay, that is being transported, that's not a permanent part of the vehicle like cameras, Luggage, skis, those kinds of things, if they're destroyed, they will not be covered, okay? All right, if an employee is um, in the process of working and, and uh, is injured, then the personal auto policy won't pay. Why? Because workers' compensation insurance will pay, okay? All right, if the vehicle is being used for business, then the personal auto policy does not apply. Okay. Vehicles with fewer than four wheels, you got to get a separate policy. Okay. If a vehicle has been furnished for the insured's regular use, then the personal auto policy does not apply. Regular use. You can use on an irregular basis, you can jump into a company car and your policy will follow you. But if that car is given to you to, to use on a regular basis and you have an accident, you're not going to be covered by your policy, you'll be covered by the company's policy. All right. Somebody takes your car or you take somebody's car and you, you cause a problem with it, you're not covered. Okay. Once again, if you're involved in racing, forget about it, okay? Well, this is good news uh, for me. If I'm at a um, playing golf at a course where I don't have a cart, my cart is here at Searcy Country Club. And so if I'm driving a rented 
golf cart and I injure someone else and they sue me, then fortunately my personal auto policy is going to follow me around. But I tell you, I'm going to want to finish playing golf, so I'm going to do my best uh, not to be careless and because I'm a Harding University professor, I'm not going to be under the influence of any uh, substance, therefore my chances of having an accident are, um, are minimal. Alright, how about that? Okay, if an accident occurs in another state and the financial responsibility in that state, remember insurance laws are state to state, and each state establishes what the minimums are for automobile policies and their coverage, okay? So if the state that you're in has higher minimums than what you have because your state has lower minimums, then the insurance company will automatically cover those higher limits, okay? Something happens. All right, if more than one liability policy covers a loss, then each insurance company will pay a pro rata share of the loss for an owned vehicle. And I think that, let's see, I thought maybe there was an example of that. All right. Insurance coverage on a policy owned by a driver who is sued is excess over the policy for a covered car okay, that is owned by someone else if the driver is driving a car, and we've got an example, he or she does not own. So let's look at that for a second. The insurance coverage uh, on a policy owned by a driver. So a driver, let's see, owned by a driver. So the driver is driving somebody else's car. And the person, so this driver, their personal auto policy is excess. So let's look at an example. We have an example here. Okay. Here we go. Ken is the named insured of his own personal auto policy. He borrows Karen's car with Karen's permission. These are the circumstances. Okay. Ken's policy has a liability limit of $50,000. Karen's policy has a limit of $100,000. Okay. So Ken is in Karen's car with permission. Ken negligently injures another motorist. That's important. Ken is at fault. Okay. The claim is $125,000. Karen's policy is the primary because hers is the, the covered car that Ken was driving. Okay, so that makes it really clear, this example. All right, it will pay up to her limit of $100,000. Ken's policy is the excess, so it will pay any amount in excess of Karen's policy up to the limit on Ken's policy, which is $50,000. So let's say the award is $140,000 then Karen's policy pays 100, Ken's policy pays 40. Let's say it's 160,000. Karen's policy pays 100, Ken's pays 50, and Ken is gonna to have to dig out of his pocket to pay the other 10. 